don't feel you have to know everything to even be able to make a start. And avoid the urge to try and jump in and fix everything all at once. We as practitioners are facilitators. We're not fixers. And as I've said several times, actually with children, it really doesn't work to jump in and fix it all because then we'll be over-treating and we need to keep our interventions to a minimum. So to go back to the analogy I used earlier, just think of yourself as freeing that stick that you threw into the river and that got stuck in the reeds at the side just to free it and then get it back in the flow. You don't have to get the stick to the end of the river, as it were. You just have to get it back in the flow and then see what emerges from that. I think it can be really distressing as a practitioner to be confronted by a child or a teen who is highly anxious, who's really struggling with life, who you may particularly with the teens, even worry is a potential suicide risk. But the correct response to that anxiety is not to do more. The correct response is where possible to just remain clear, remain still in yourself, try to keep your clarity and just do the best treatment that you can. And to know that no child with anxiety is going to be free of anxiety forevermore after one treatment. This is going to be a process and a journey that you're going to go on with this patient. And I always make a point of making that really clear to parents from the outset that for acupuncture to work, it needs time. This is not like going and getting a magic pill from the doctor. Um, So it's much better to just be clear and upfront about that from the start. And um, before you do anything, as I said before, but I just wanted to reiterate it, you need to build rapport because until you build rapport, you will not be able to understand the unique nature of the child's Shen. You won't get them to feel relaxed enough for them to reveal more of themselves to you. Uh, And with young children, you just won't be able to deliver the treatment if they don't feel good about you. So I just, I've mentioned some of these points as I went along, but I just wanted to quite quickly actually just mention a few points that you might, if you don't already use them, uh, you might want to go away and brush up on because I think they're points that are really helpful to use in the treatment of anxiety and other mental emotional disorders in children. The kidney chest points by which I primarily mean kidney 23, 24 and 25. The outer back shoe points, the window of heaven points, points on the gallbladder channel on the head. Uh, It's no coincidence that nearly half of the points on the gallbladder channel are on the head. Um, And therefore they have a big impact on the brain and the mind. And any points containing, uh, whose name contains reference to the spirit. And there is a table here of those points. I'm not going to go through them all now, but they're all in my book. And this table is in my book and they're in, uh, you know, I, I just think if you want to effectively treat anxiety, then you need to maybe, if you don't already, expand your point repertoire to include more of these points. 